bless you. What a great joy to be here once again with all of you after not being able to come for a while. And today God gave us the opportunity to accompany you in such a beautiful, wonderful moment for all of us, which is to be able to accompany our beloved sister Maria Luisa and the great blessings that will come starting this moment for each and every one of you. For this beautiful island, it's going to be huge. Blessed be our God. And the church worldwide continues to grow. We continue to see wonders, marvels, signs. The live streams on Sundays is viewed in approximately 132 countries. And it's incredible because we say, wow, the church is in about 62 countries and there are about 20 additional countries where there are congregations or small groups that are being formed, groups of 20, 30, 40 believers. But when we see the summary of the live stream, it's in 132 countries, over half the world. So the glory be to our God. And the most beautiful thing is that people are learning, learning to know of God through a teacher, an evangelist that's woman of God, whom God has appointed to teach us so that we may draw nearer to God and get to know him. Blessed be our God. And someone mentioned, oh, Puerto Rico's enchantment. Oh, that's the church, the church of the living God. Blessed be our God. I want to share with you everything that is happening less than a month ago for example our sister visited portugal and the pastor was telling me today he was saying it's incredible the amount of miracles testimonies it's something really beautiful to see how god works that's how it's going to be today that's what's going to happen with all of us all kinds of miracles and to summarize I'll share three testimonies very quickly. One, for example, there was a sister who suffered from epileptic seizures. And she said that lately they were getting worse and worse. And when Sister Mary Luisa arrived, she said that was um, like the 14th of last month of March. And when a sister walked in, our sister greeted her and she shared the problem she had. So our sister said, don't worry, because... You are never going to suffer from these epileptic seizures. Those are spirits. And those of us who see God, we understand this. And she said, amen, sister. The doctors are telling me that this is a problem because of this or not enough oxygen to the brain. And that's why this is happening. The sister said, no, these are spiritual problems. There is a spirit there. But don't worry, that spirit is going to leave. And to this day, she never again suffered one of those seizures. Glory to God. A couple for over 10 years, they couldn't, they couldn't have children. They've done all types of things in vitro and, and all of these different things. But on that day, our sister prayed and she said, there are people who desire to have descendants who desire this blessing. And the pastor was happy because they arrived yesterday on Sunday to say that she is pregnant. Blessed is our God. And work-related. For example, there was a brother, and he said that he's an engineer, and he's Colombian. He started working in Portugal. He had to clean and do these different things. He said, oh, I studied engineering. I have a master's degree in here. I'm mopping and, and cleaning. I said, Lord, if this is what I got to do, I'll do it. And on that day, our sister prayed for her work and documents and that God would open doors. And he said that the next day they called him and it said to him, look, we have your resume. We're going to give you a job only for one day. And we're going to give you this problem. See if you can resolve it. You have one day to do it. And he said, oh, yes, of course. So he went, he resolved the problem, did everything. And the surprising part was that on the next day, they told him from now on, you are hired and definitely... Glory to God. Blessed is our God. And that's how God's blessings are. When 
when a woman of God visits us, when an apostle or a prophet is, visits us. Hey Amen. Let us stand up and let us begin the Bible study. I hope that you've come very prepared. We must have strength and vigor. Let us ask God to manifest himself greatly. For God to see the effort we made because the blessing is great. Amen, brothers and sisters. Sir. We're going to leave very happy and joyful on this day. Glory to God. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, and let us prepare ourselves for this God who lives and say to him, God of glory, good Father, you, O Lord, are great and mighty. You are the most beautiful and wonderful being that exists. Because, Lord, you know that we do it all for you and because of you. You know, O Lord, that we are nothing without you. And today, O Lord, you have allowed us to come here to this beautiful island to Puerto Rico, Lord. And we hope that everyone who has come, everyone who is here, who have made that effort for none of them to leave empty-handed, for everyone, one way or another, they may feel your presence and feel that their lives are going to change because you are the mighty one. You are the wonderful one. Everything we do is for you and by you. We live. We learn to live by knowing you, O oh Lord. And we want to thank you for the simple fact of being able to breathe and live for the simple fact that you have allowed the church to be here in Portugal. It is a great blessing because many, many more churches will come for this country, for this beautiful island, because that's how you are. Because you never stay still each day. You continue to win over hearts with each passing day. And for that, you have appointed a spiritual leader, our sister Maria Luisa, to spread the gospel so that those great wonders and signs may be heard. Like those that have happened will are going to happen, will continue happening. Today, my God, I beg of you, Lord, that this Bible study, which is going to be shown worldwide, may be a great blessing to us all. And that especially those of us who are here and their families may leave with a great impression, and especially the desire to want to please you, to live for you and by you, because you are the most wonderful, beautiful being that exists. That's why, oh Lord, receive this moment, because everything we do is for you and by you, because you are the mighty one. You are the wonderful one. Who is like you, O oh Lord? Who is like you, O oh Father? If we live for you and by you, that's why, O oh Lord, receive this moment. Receive this service today. Receive this Bible study. In the name of Christ, amen and amen. I am happy to see that the church continues to grow. The brother says that we hadn't come since 2012. The time has come, our sister since 2014, and every time our sister Mary Luisa visits us, there is growth. And this place is going to be small for the growth that's coming. Here in Puerto Rico, there are many men and women of God who thirst and hunger for the spiritual things, and they want to draw nearer to God. May God prepare you for that service with the spiritual gifts, with the doctrine for His service. It states in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1, and let us read what we must do. We have orders here. It states in Ephesians 5 verse 1, Therefore, be imitators of whom? Of God. As whom? As dear children. So who do we need to imitate? Who do we need to know? How do we do it? Through the gospel. Through the doctrine. That's why it is so important to have a Bible study such as this one. It is important to receive those sermons and hear those reflections and read the Bible to get to know whom? And be able to do what pleases him. Amen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 2, what does God ask of us? Verse 2, let us read it. And let us read the recommendation from God, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among whom? As is fitting for whom? Verse number four. For this you know, that no fornicator unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance where 
Therefore, do not be one. In verse 8, what does it say ultimately? Amen. Glory to the Lord. You may be seated, my brothers and sisters. We must walk as children of what? Of light. Meaning we must be doers of the word of God. Not simply be hearers. Not simply say, oh, I go to church. But what about your testimony? What about your example? How do you behave at home or where you go to school or where you work? Everywhere, we must be light and example. Amen, brothers and sisters? Recently, something happened. I went to a place in the United States and asked, oh, I know someone here. And they said to me, oh, that man, what an example. What a gentleman. What a well-mannered person. And I said proudly, oh, he is a brother of mine. And he's, oh, he's your brother. I didn't say in Christ, but I said he's my brother. So I felt happy of that great example because I went to another place. Oh, that person is terrible. They fight. They're in gossip. They're, they envy. They do all these different things. But how beautiful to speak in a good way about the children of God. Amen. So let us sing a chorus, which is very beautiful which is when God captivates us. Let us sing this hymn, hymn 47, I Need Thee Every Hour. Hymn 47. be to our God. Blessed be this mighty, great, and wonderful God. We were reading that we were walking in darkness without God. And as the Bible states, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, meaning the devil. But we have come to the light, to the gospel, to the doctrine, and there needs to be a life change. Amen. That's why it's important for us to sing hymn 242, He Leadeth Me. Have you liked that new CD, hymns number 11? Beautiful, right? And this is one of the, those hymns that I have liked the most. So let us sing this hymn, hymn 242.
blessed be our God. And we are all blessed because that good shepherd leads us. And he speaks to us through dreams, through visions, through prophecy. And that is why the church becomes that first heaven. Because he is with us, but he wants to be where? In us. So let us stand up and let us sing chords number 110. Oh Lord, you are my God. And he sure is, and he will continue to be. And it depends on whom? On each and every one of us. It depends on whom for God to manifest himself in our life. It depends on our mind and our hearts. For us to truly take this path seriously, just as our beloved sister Mary Luisa has shown it for over 50 years, giving her life to God, devoting her heart completely in each of us, we are that blessing, that promise that God made to her over 50 years to her, to our sister Maria Luisa, that the church would grow, that it would be in many places around the world. And this is one more place for God. Blessed be our God. Let us sing this chorus, chorus 110. Oh Lord, you are my God. Glory to God. And we exalt God with our good behavior, living a good life with the way we act, dress at every moment, everywhere. With that good way of living, we will always give glory to God. Because even if you don't believe, people observe us, they watch us. And we also have a camera here that's recording us all the time that has Wi Fi over there in the heavens of heavens. And it's called the Book of Life where everything is written down. But as long as we're here in these bodies, we must be an example that being a Christian is possible. Being a child of God is possible. Amen, brothers and sisters. That is why we're also going to sing, lastly, chorus 172, I know that you are here. Who among you believe so? And who among you believe that he's going to manifest himself today? Who among you are going to receive blessings on this day? Let us sing this chorus, chorus 172.
Glory to God. And he's here. And we feel joy. And we feel happiness. And even more now with the presence of our beloved sister Maria Luisa. May God bless you all. We give thanks to our God because God lives and he manifests himself today. And we need to value God. We need to honor him and give him thanks. You may be seated, my beloved brothers and sisters. Today, we are going to be here reflecting on the Lord and we're going to open to James. In the book of James. Chapter 2 In the book of James, chapter 2, in verse 14, very quickly, I am going to read and I will focus on a specific verse. And it says here, the Apostle James, he was preaching to the Jews. He was preaching the gospel. And he says, My brethren... Of course, here, now they have converted, right? The Jews, some Jews had converted to the Lord and James was addressing them. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? What does it mean to have faith? What does the word faith mean? Can someone tell me what does faith mean? Well, to believe, to believe. So if someone says that they believe, here it says they have faith, but does not have works. What are the works? The works are the actions. Works are actions, the acts, the things that you do or stop doing. Those are actions. I do these things or I don't do these things. That is an action. And that is called a work, an act to do something. And so the works, it says. They say that they have faith or they believe, but they don't have works. In other words, they don't act. They haven't done anything. He says, can faith save him? He is saying it's possible that it can't. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. Well, or today we would tell the person, well, you are in need, you are starving, you don't have clothing and you haven't eaten yet and it's already 6 p.m. and you haven't eaten. Go, go and pray and ask God, go and trust in God. That is what he's saying here, that my duty was to give a solution in that moment to say, here, take this money, go and eat something in the meanwhile and seek God. But whatever I can give is this. I will give you this money. So I did what? A work. I did a work. That was a work. Some people might call it a charity work or a benefit. Here, the apostle says, yes, people say, no, go, depart in peace, be warmed and filled whenever you can. But they don't give them the things that are necessary for the body. So what does it profit? They do not profit. Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. If there are no actions, if there aren't any works, that faith or that belief is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. So someone may say, I believe a lot in God. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The other person says, well, I am doing many charity works as people today. They say, I do a lot for charity. I am giving so many donations to all the foundations, to all of the nonprofit organizations and centers of benefits. I give them money. I give them clothes and food. And that is what I do. So I have attained heaven. 
And they say they do all of these things, but they don't seek God. They don't pray, nor do they know God. They don't do anything for the things of God. So they are just dedicated to doing these works and that with that, it's enough. With that, they're able to attain heaven. That is the example given by the apostle. Could he be doing something for himself? No. Is he benefiting others? But for him, he is not acting for their spiritual life. Because that person would need to believe in God, praise and seek God, and then do works of charity aside from fulfilling the commandments of the Lord. And so he says in verse 18, But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Implying, saying, I do believe in God, and I am fulfilling the commandments of the Lord. I have turned away from what is evil. I am not committing sin. I am not doing evil things. And so I am showing you my works because I am not committing adultery. I am not stealing. I am not robbing. I am not blaspheming. I am not slandering. I do not envy people. I am not malicious. I do not harm anyone. And I believe in God. So there they do have faith and they have the works. That's it. So 19, it says, you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. It says that demons believe in God. They know that God exists. They fear him. They flee from him. They are afraid. And I suppose they even humble themselves before God. They hide. But could it be that they have works? In other words, do they do something to please God? No. So they believe or they have faith but they don't have works i want for us to understand what works are and here we are going to read another verse where we are going to understand well what the works are so that we may not be confused we must have the two things to have faith and to have works so up to this point we are understanding that the works are actions to act and to do. And we will go now to, to Ephesians, to Galatians. Let's go for a moment here in Galatians chapter 5. And there we will continue to look at the works. Because we know what faith is, we now know that faith is to believe. We believe in God. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. The demons also believe. The devil also believes in God. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil fears him. He runs away from him. And so, aside from that, we need to have works. But the works that we need to have, are they good or bad? What are the works? Good works. And it turns out that there are good works and bad works. A good work, a person who steals, they have good works or bad works. Bad works, they are behaving badly. Who does not steal, who is careful, they are doing good works. Whoever respects what is not theirs, they are doing good. And so we want the works that we may understand them because this way you are going to be a great teacher, male and female, of the word of the Lord. In Galatians, it says in verse 16, 5, 16, the Apostle Paul says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. To walk in the Spirit, we have seen that it is to do God's will. We already know the Word. We know what we must not do and to turn away from sin. And by turning away from sin and worshiping God and praying to Him and seeking Him consistently, it means that we live in the Spirit, that we are walking in the Spirit of the Lord. And verse 17, verse 18, But if you are led 
by the Spirit, you are not under the law, under bondage, but that the Holy Spirit gives us liberty and the Holy Spirit comes to us and delivers us and removes and takes away that sinful tendency, those weaknesses and the things that we like that we shouldn't and those wrongful things. So the Holy Spirit is our deliverer. That is why when we are led by the Spirit of God, He delivers us. He helps us to be able to live that that word, that gospel, to do good works and to be able to fulfill having faith and do good works, which is what we want, to have faith and to do good works. Because we cannot do it just by having faith and not having works. No, to just have works and not having faith, you can't have that. We must live both things, faith and works. And here in verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh. So the works of the flesh, we're going to read what these evil works are. The ones that we need to avoid. When James says, You say that you have faith, but you don't have works. It does not profit you. What James needed to do was to explain saying, you, you say that you have faith, but you don't have good works. That is what James was missing, to say good works. Here we are going to read the good works, rather the evil works. In verse 19, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, you may read, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Let's stop there. Etc. I would say, etc., etc. Because the list of sins, it is a very, very long list of all of the sins that exist of the bad works. Let us read a little now of the good works. And so it says, just as I also, this is in the verse that you were reading, when it says, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But now we're going to read the good works the ones that James said. James was saying this clearly. James says, he says, but someone will say, he says faith in verse 17, it says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works is dead, but someone will say you have faith and I have works. So in verse 14 in James, it says, what does it profit my brethren? If someone says he has faith, but does not have good works, works. So we are analyzing and seeing that there are good and bad works. We have read the bad works. Now we are going to read the good works. And it says that the good works are here in verse 22. And it says that they are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When it comes to our lives, the Holy Spirit transforms us and changes us and helps us, delivers us. And so we begin to have love. And do you know that love entails a multitude, a multitude of sins that we turn away from, that we committed in the world because there are many sins that exist or the offenses or wrongful things that exist that we should not do or commit. And when we stop committing all of these multitude of things that there are, of offenses, mistakes, errors. When we stop committing them, we say, or God says, you have love. We say, I have love. I have love. Because he says that love, love is what entails all of this. When you say, I love God, it means that to love God is, I am fulfilling all of the commandments and I have turned away from all of the sins that I committed. I turned away from them, and now I can say, I love God. 
And by saying I love my neighbor, the people that are around me, to the people who I can see, not just your family, relatives, or friends, but also people that I don't know. And I love them because I don't wish bad on any of those people, nor do I harm them or hurt them, nor do I want to. And so that means that I am loving. I have love. So I have love and I love God. I have love and I love my neighbor. And this is a fruit that the Holy Spirit gives us when he changes us and transforms us. He gives us that love. We stop sinning. And aside from that, he says he gives us peace and joy because whom among you have felt peace and joy in your being for having gone down this path of God? Because no one has forced you nor has threatened you to be here to come and congregate or to follow this path. Because there is something in you that makes you want to press on because it's God's joy. It is God's peace. It is God's patience, his kindness, his goodness that is in your heart, in your souls. And that is what makes us feel that that is why we are here. And the world says they have you controlled. They've softened you. They control you. They rule over you. But it's not like that. If there is a ruler, it is God and the Holy Spirit. He is the one who has us there, astonished, captivated, And there we are, waiting for the wonderful promises that God makes us consistently. And so those are the good works. The good works, love, as I said, which is to stop committing so many sins that exist, the hundreds of sins that there are, and to have that joy, that peace that God gives, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, it says, there is no law. Because those who are Christ's, it says, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. They have sacrificed it. They have removed it because that is the sacrifice. To remove that which we loved so much that produced so much pleasure. To remove that for the love of God for wanting to please God, for wanting to show that I have faith and that I have good works. And so those are the works that we need to practice the good works, to do God's will. It isn't just believing, just as there are people. Many people, I hear them say, I believe in God. Everyone, if you go and give a survey and you ask them, the majority say, I believe in God. But would they have works? They don't have good works. I would imagine that all of their works are bad. They lack good works to demonstrate that truly they believe in God. Whoever says they believe in God or who reads the Bible and believes in God And they need to put it into practice. They need to act. They need to do things. They need to please God. Because it's not just about believing, just as here James emphasizes. And so he says, What what does it profit if someone says he has faith but does not have good works? Can faith save him? No, it's not going to save him. This is a person who is wasting their time. They are hoping for something that is never going to come because faith goes hand in hand with good works or with fulfilling the commandments of the Lord and to continue to seek God, delving into him and also seeking the Holy Spirit with his gifts so that all of us may be able to live a spiritual life. Even though we are here in the world and although we are surrounded by people of the world with these things, we have our spiritual lives because it is God who is going to be dwelling with us. That is what God wants from us. He doesn't want casual attendees. 
He doesn't want people who say, yes, I believe, I believe, but that's it. I don't pray, I don't read the Bible, I don't seek the gifts, and my vices, I continue with my vices. I continue with all of those things, with my life and the things of the world. And so, they are wasting their time, they are not believing, although there are many people who like to read the Bible and they say, I read the Bible a lot. They read the Bible a lot, but they don't have good works for God. They are wasting their time. And so I wanted for us to read that verse about works and faith so that it may be very clear so that we may be able to understand, appreciate, and value more the work of the Lord. And now in this way, we are going to end with our reading there. And it says that we need to live by the Spirit of God, and walk also in the Spirit of God. It's not just to preach or believe it, but to put it into practice and to do things so that God may be truly pleased with us. The glory and the honor be for our living God. We are going to begin now with the questions in this afternoon. Questions... I don't know if people are prepared, the brothers or sisters who are going to ask their questions. Let us begin with the first question. Sister Mara Luisa, it's a great pleasure for all of us to have you with us this afternoon, this marvelous afternoon, after such a long time. And being able to appreciate all the great blessings that God has given us here in the island of Puerto Rico. And I also want to give you thanks, sister, for the opportunity, the great opportunity that I had to have been in charge of the church in Mayagüez. And because of the pandemic, we know that it was closed, but our hearts have been steadfast here in the church of Puerto Rico, serving God, loving God. And the best example has been you, Sister Marlisa, that great example, that faithfulness and that commitment is what motivates us to continue to be steadfast in the gospel of the Lord so that we can continue to give the glory to God. Glory to God. Sister, I'd like to ask you a question, which is in the second book of the Kings, chapter number 10, verse number 31. Second Kings 1031. 1031. Yes. Where the scripture expresses and says, Sister, if you allow yes, me, I will read. And it says, But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord, God of Israel, with all his heart. For he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, who had made Israel sin. Sister, my question is based on the fact that in the church of God, just like Jehu was king of Israel, and God had given him some commandments through the prophet Elijah, which he fulfilled, with preciseness, but he did not take heed to walk in the law of the Lord because he esteemed himself highly as king to have that title. And because he was king of Israel, he made decisions that were to his convenience because we can see that he did not remove the golden calves that were in Bethel and Dan, but instead he allowed them. Today in the gospel, when we have this beautiful gospel, when we have the guidance of the Holy Spirit that manifests in our lives and that every day you teach us, sister, because the Holy Spirit uses you to teach us this beautiful gospel and that we have been called to be called kings and priests, how can we all take care of ourselves and also not esteem ourselves too highly because of the title that the Lord allows many of us, for example, to prophesy or to be preachers or to be pastors or because of all of the blessings that we have in the church and many times we esteem ourselves too highly and we behave in an inappropriate way making decisions without first consulting God and we lose focus of our spiritual life and many times God allows us to continue to to move forward and many people can leave the church or maybe we can be given bad example or we can see that many spiritual lives can become stuck and perhaps even our own spiritual life can get stuck and in this same way lose the blessings of God. Thank you so much, sister, for your answer. A person that receives, a man or woman, that receives the Holy Spirit 
that has the things of God in their heart and begins to have that change of life, it's difficult for this person to distort their ways, to make a mistake. Because if this person loves God, there is nothing in the world that can make them change, that can make them stray. There is nothing. But if the person is in the congregation, mediocre, with a mediocre life, they are a person who hasn't made a decision, they have not converted to God, they have not understood God's plan, the word, the doctrine, they have not understood it, then they do not convert. They just become a casual attendee. They like it. It's nice. They say, I like going to church. I like for them to give me prophecy. They love getting laying on of hands and prophecy. But their heart is closed. Their heart is there. They do not open their heart so that God may enter to dwell in them and to change them and transform them completely. That person is jeopardizing their spiritual life because they are at risk. At any moment, the enemy comes, the devil, with any circumstance in life and ties them down, takes them out of church, puts ideas in their head and in their heart. They have envy or greed or covetousness, anger, grudges, for whatever it may be. The devil puts all of these things because the person is prone to that because they haven't been sincere with God, nor have they prepared their heart for God, nor have they converted to God. That can happen today in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the gospel, that is why when you read the epistles of the apostles, they all almost say the same things every time. Every time they are telling people what we read in James. James is saying, and you say that you have faith, but you don't have good works. Where? Where have you fulfilled the commandments of the Lord? You are not fulfilling them. You are committing sin. You are in the church, in the congregation, but you continue to sin. You say that you have faith, but you don't have works. That is what the apostle is saying. If you continue this way, you are wasting your time. Faith on its own is not going to save you. You are saved when you act, when you do what is good, when you repent and you prepare your heart. That, and if you never do it, then one day... You are going to leave the congregation. You will leave indefinitely into the world to continue to sin. And you lose the blessings from God. Those are those two paths. That is why we are here fighting. Every day of our lives, we are in this fight. Every one of you acknowledges your weaknesses. Some say, I am arrogant. I am irritable. I get so angry and the other person says, I'm always envious. I feel angry. I feel grudges. I can't forgive. It hurts me when someone offends me. It hurts me and I don't want to even speak to them. That is not correct, but I can't get rid of this. Every one of you have a weakness that you acknowledge and you say, I don't want to be like this. Help me, Lord, to remove all of these things. Help me. And every day we are in this fight. But when we love God, we are fighting to change. But when the person does not convert, nor do they open their heart, but they close their heart, then that person with time, well, they leave the church. They leave the congregation. Or in other words, the devil takes them out and takes them to destroy them. That is what can happen today. Something very different to what happened to the ancient people of Israel the ancient people would sin with idolatry because of idolatry and because they would not fulfill the commandments of Moses. But today, it is so different because it's the Holy Spirit that comes to our lives to cleanse us, to remove things, and we are making decisions. We make a decision. I do want to press on in God's path. Help me, Lord, and change me. And the other person says, well, Lord, I don't want, my family says not to and society and my friends, no, I don't want to. It's beautiful, but I would rather go there. So they are decisions that we make. According to your decisions, God is going to help each person. Therefore, let us make good decisions by pleasing God and loving him and following him so that 
God may perfect our hearts and that we may convert truly. And this way, we may not leave or turn away or hurt our spiritual lives and that the devil may not come and steal that blessing. Let us continue another question. Sister Mara Luisa, good afternoon. May you and your companions be welcomed to the church in Puerto Rico. I have a question, sister, if you allow me. Sister, we know that in the beginning, in the origin, God created humanity and he also created the Garden of Eden. Sister, then after that, our Lord Jesus Christ came and he repealed the material, the physical things for the spiritual things. And then, sister, today we can rejoice ourselves knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ, he made of our hearts the tabernacle for him to live in, which allows us to meditate that the Garden of Eden, if today it is possible that in our humanity, looking at it spiritually, that we can live and rejoice those privileges and those great blessings that through the goodwill of God from the beginning, we could enjoy and apply it today in each and every one of our beings. Sister, may God bless you for your answer and we love you. But what is it that you're trying to say to enjoy today? He talks about Eden or the beginning when God created things. What do you want for us to enjoy as in the beginning? Yes, sister. It's that direct contact when God, when Adam he manifested and Eve. Himself, oh, when he manifested himself with Adam and spoke to them. Today, God does the same. Today, the Lord does the same. That is why here in Ephesians 4.11, it says that the Lord Jesus Christ in his church, he placed prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers. He placed them in the church. And it says that this was to perfect all of the believers. The Lord calls them saints to perfect the saints. He says the saints are all of the believers. All of you have that title of being saints, which means that you have been separated for God, for salvation. And so the word saint, male or female, means separated. Separated for what? For the kingdom of heaven. And today, the Lord also in his promises, the Lord Jesus Christ told the apostles, when I leave when I am no longer here with you. I am going to send the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you have read this, if you remember having read this. He says the Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit will be among you and within you. Just as in the beginning, Adam and Eve enjoyed the presence of God. Adam and Eve enjoyed it because God spoke to them and surely through visions, because that would be the most logical in a vision, everything that they spoke with God, they were visions that they saw and God would speak to them and give them orders because the Lord himself told Moses later, he said, I am not going to speak to anyone directly just to you. He told Moses to you. I will speak face to face, but with no one else. I will speak to everyone through visions or through prophecy or through dreams. I will speak to them. But to you, you are the only one who I will speak face to face. That is the promise he made to Moses. Therefore, that is why we deduce that when Adam and Eve, when they spoke to God, it was through visions. When they spoke to God and God spoke to Cain, when he spoke to Cain and said, why did you kill Abel? Everything was through visions. That's how he spoke to them. And to the prophets in antiquity, he would also speak to them through visions and dreams. He would give them the revelation or he would take their mouths to speak just as today with the gift of prophecy where the Lord, the Holy Spirit takes the person's mouth to speak. But through the prophet, the Lord is deeper and takes over the prophet to speak or the Spirit of God comes with power to the prophet and the prophet begins to speak and give the revelation. But that is the way in which 
God manifests himself, and that is how he did it. Before, he did it with all of the prophets in antiquity, with Adam and Eve, with Noah, when he told him to build the ark as well. Through visions, he showed him, he spoke to Noah, and Noah saw and heard God and the orders, and he didn't realize that he was seeing visions. But that was the way that God manifested himself. Today, God does the same with us. Today, he speaks to us through visions, to the brothers who are prophets or to women who are prophetesses. He speaks to them through visions and dreams. He speaks through prophecy using their mouth. The sister, the prophetess or the prophet, they can be praying and then suddenly God takes their mouth and he begins to speak and God is speaking, the Holy Spirit speaking to them. So it's the same. Today, we cannot be sorrowful or say, oh, how wonderful it was that the people in ancient times enjoyed the manifestation of God because today it's the same with us and God. He does that with us, although the world and people and other Christian religions mock us and say that this doesn't exist. Because the other Christian religions, they call themselves evangelical. They say, no, that doesn't exist. That ended. That prophecy ended. And no one speaks in tongues. That has ended. So God's power has finished. God no longer has power, so he doesn't manifest himself. That is a lie. God manifests himself today. Just have a sincere, pure, clean heart before the Lord and you will see how God will come to your life. He speaks to you and manifests himself. He will make promises. He will be with you. And he is going to speak to you just as he spoke to Adam and Eve. That's it. God is the same yesterday and today. It's the same God yesterday, today and forever. Glory to God. Let us continue with another question. Good afternoon, beloved Sister Maria Luisa and all those that accompany you. It is of great joy for all of us to have you all here today. We longed for your visit and the visit of all of your team that supports you, Sister Marilisa. I have a question if you allow in 1 John chapter 3, verse 21 and verse 22. 1 John 3, 21. 1 John 3, 21. Yes, sister, you may read. You may Thank read. you, sister. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Sister, the question is based on these two verses. I would like for you to clarify and explain them more in depth, because in these verses, Due to the fact that confidence in God is present or lack of confidence that the believer may have or the discouragement can be related to the purity of heart. Sister, if you would be so kind and explain this topic more in depth. And we know that starting from today, the gospel will continue to spread here in the island. Thanks Very to your well. presence. Here in 1 John chapter 3, here where it says in verse 18, do you have the Bible there? In 1 John 3, 18, it says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know, so he's saying that we are loving God and our neighbors. But he says, don't just do it by word or in tongue, which is the same, but do it with your heart. And in verse 19, and by this we know that we are of the truth of God and shall assure our hearts before God. This way, it says that we ourselves are going to know that we are truly children of God because we are sincere and we love God with our heart and we love our neighbor as well with our heart. 20. For if our heart condemns us, it says, for if our heart condemns, remember that our heart is our mindset as well. When it talks about the mind, the mind is different from our thoughts. When it talks about the mind, it's our mind or conceptualization that I as a human being have about myself and everything that's around me in the world and all of those things. That is that mindset. That is our mind. But all of this comes from our heart. Our heart is the engine. It's the main part. And so everything is there in your heart knowledge, feeling, hate, or love here in your heart. 
To hate or love is not here in your thoughts. It's here in your heart, in your mind, or in your mindset. So that is why it says, For if our heart condemns us, that is why. Because from our heart, that is where the good and bad comes from. Knowledge and concepts all comes from our heart. And it says, if our heart condemns us, saying you are behaving badly or doing things badly before God, you are committing sin. Your conscience isn't good. You need to change. Look, you are bad. You are wishing bad on others. That is what my heart is saying. That is what my heart is saying. And we say, my conscience is telling me this, but it's our heart. The one who says this and judges me, it judges me. And so it says, and by this we know that we are of the truth. If our heart condemns us, God is greater because he knows everything. And so it says that our heart or our conscience or our mindset rebukes us. It judges us for what we are or what we aren't. And so there is someone greater, which is our God. 21. So John says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, if it didn't judge us, he says, if our heart doesn't teach us, but the heart is there accepting everything, then we have God. He can judge us. He can rebuke us. He can say, do not do certain things. And I will say, yes, Lord, I will not do it. Help me. And so he says, yes, I am going to help you and I'm going to transform you. I will send my spirit to transform you. Yes, Lord, thank you. And that's it. Our life changes. And it says in 21, it says we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask to God, we receive it. Why? Because our heart is now what? Clean our conscience. We are obeying God. We are loving God, loving our neighbor. And so God now gives us what we pray for, our petitions. So everything that we ask, God gives it to us. Therefore, when you pray and pray and ask God and you don't have an answer, then say, I am failing the Lord. I am failing. I am sinning. I am missing something because God does not listen to my prayer. He isn't answering what I am asking for and I am suffering a lot. So that is a good reflection. And whatever we ask, we receive from God because we keep his commandments. In other words, we fulfill the word. We do not sin and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment and to love him. Let us fulfill his commandments. So this way, God may be with us. The glory for our God. Let us continue with another question. Another question. Sister Mary Luisa, good afternoon. May God bless you. I thank you with all my heart for visiting along with the brothers and sisters. I love you very much. Thank you so much for Hymns 11. It has been a delight to have new music and to know that God has allowed us this beautiful thing because he gives us the blessing to worship and praise him, sister. I thank you with all my heart. I have two questions from the Bible. The first is in Proverbs 14. Verse 26. Proverbs 14, 26. Yes, sister, you may read. It states, In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. Sister, my question is mostly about the words place of refuge. We know that the fear of the Lord is to love, obey, serve, praise, follow him and press on aside from everything to pray, congregate, read the Bible and desire to change every day to please God. But there are moments in life where we may have an illness that lasts many years and even the Holy Spirit in his mercy comforts us and tells us not to worry, saying, I will heal you, press onward. And we continue with that confidence waiting for those illnesses that perhaps in a given moment 
we, our bodies become weary and we cry. There are days where we cry because we have that pain there. We're going through this difficulty. So my question is based on what else can we do aside from waiting for those promises? Does this place of refuge go hand in hand with confidence or is there something more, sister? Yes, it goes hand in hand, hope and trust. But we also must reflect and to analyze our lives to see if we are failing God or if we had failed God at one point and we are now paying the consequences. Perhaps God is punishing us or perhaps we are being tested for whatever reason we need to examine ourselves. What am I failing you in, Lord? But we need to press on, press on in the fight of praying and crying out to the Lord until one day he has mercy because he has given us the example and to do as the parable of the persistent widow, where she would go to the judge and the judge did not want to give her justice. But since she would go all the time until the judge got tired and said, I am tired of seeing this woman, I'm going to give her justice. That is how the Lord is with us, to pray a lot and ask and ask, and he will act. But let us examine ourselves. Let us try to walk righteously before the Lord. Let us try to change. Let us see what are we failing God in and change it. That's it. To ask God to help us as well, because that also influences our prayers to reach the presence of our God. Let us continue. My second question is in Exodus 32. Verse number seven. Exodus 32, seven. Yes. Yes, yes, sister. Sister, and it states, And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Sister, we know that in this chapter, Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving God's law, and the people had made a golden calf. Our God was very angry with the people of Israel. My question, with all due respect, Sister Mary Luisa, is that God gave you a calling and gave you the reins of the church so that you can become a spiritual leader, prophetess, and apostle appointed by our God. I know that we are in a different age, the age of the gospel, where the Holy Spirit is leading each and every one of us and is teaching us. But I would like to know if at any time over these years in your journey in this path, if at any time has the Lord, because I see it does not say anywhere in the Bible, neither in Psalms nor in the prophets, where the Lord says, for your people, as the Lord said to Moses, referring to the people as something that belonged to him, as if it was his. So I would like to know, that if in these times, has there been a case where God has been displeased or has become saddened or has become angry? Has the Lord said to you, for your people, my daughter, for your people have displeased me, for your people is not doing as I please? Today in the church of the Lord, we cannot compare to the people of Israel in antiquity because before the Lord was forming a nation, a people, he formed a nation. And when he told Moses, your people, he was saying the correct thing because God had given Moses that people of Israel so that he could take them out of Egypt. And he brought them out of Egypt. So that was, he said, your people, the people that you brought out of Egypt, look at what they're doing. That is a way of saying it. It is a saying or a phrase given by the translators in different languages, but we're not going to Pay too close attention where it says your people or the people, just that he gave him sheep. God gave Moses sheep, a fold, and that is why he said that. Or he could have also said your fold. Look at your sheep, what they're doing. Very well. Today, the Lord addresses the church individually. The Lord today is not going to say the church in Las Ferias and Colombia, they are walking unrighteously before me. He cannot say that. That the church in Las Ferias, the church there, his people is there, people are failing. No. 
In all the places where there is a congregation, there will be people that come just because they are a casual attendee or out of curiosity or because they like it, but there are a lot of people who have not been converted. And so we cannot call them the church. We are not going to judge, nor do we know who they are. God is the one who knows who is who. And so we congregate and each one of us seek God. And God is the one who knows who will be saved, who won't, who is the casual attendee, who is the one who believes, who doesn't, who has good works or who has bad works. God is not going to go and punish an entire congregation today in the gospel. That is not going to happen where the Lord is going to punish the entire congregation, but the person who makes the mistake. Each person individually who commits an offense, God punishes. And that's it. That's what happens but not the entire congregation as it happened with the people of Israel. Because with the people of Israel, there was one person who committed a sin. With just one, the Lord would get angry and he would send a plague or an illness and thousands would die to punish them because everyone is sinning. So the punishment would come for many people. Today, it's each person. Each one of us are aware of our life and each one of us are before our God and he judges us. He punishes us and says, you are failing me. You are not doing things the right way. You are not fulfilling it. Press on, press on in your path. Progress, do not stop. Do not look to the sides. Do not turn back. Remain steadfastly until you achieve your goal. That is what the Lord tells us now in the gospel. That is why each and every one of us fight to have our blessings, to have our stars, to have our crowns, our garments, everything that God offers us. Amen. That's it. Each person presses on. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord and give thanks to our God. Asking him. Asking the Lord, giving thanks to him and asking him about our needs, our petitions or the desires of our heart. Whatever it may be, each one of you is going to pray to the Lord and giving thanks to him. Holy Father, Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob, the God of Daniel, who kept and saved him there from the hands of those kings, idolaters, pagans, but that you, my Lord, had mercy on all of those people that the Bible tells us about. And we are here growing in faith, believing and growing in our spiritual life. We are here fighting to attain the spiritual blessings, to attain triumph. We are fighting to attain eternal life. Among so many things, we are fighting in this life to win over the mercies of our God and so that he may support us, that he may help us and listen to our prayers and to bless us each day, remove our sadness, our sorrows, and all conflict and all affliction and every attack of the enemy. We are here, Lord, in this fight, before you, every day, waiting for your mighty hand, waiting for you to bless us, to listen to us, and that you may extend your mighty hand and guide us with your hand, and that we may press on and learn the doctrine, that we, O oh Lord, may be great wise children, wise of the word of the Lord, that we may be well versed in the true doctrine that leads to eternal life. Help us, Heavenly Father. Help us to press on. Give us new strength. Extend your mighty hand on everyone and upon each person and bless them. Give them healing in their body heal them in their spirit and their soul and their being give them lord the spiritual blessings 
give them what they need. Because many need the spiritual things. Many have afflictions and sorrow. And there are many conflicts in many. But you bless each one and deliver, and cleanse and comfort. Visit them in dreams. Give them visions as well. Manifest yourself, Lord, with the spiritual gifts in perfection. Supply all of their needs that are material or physical. Fulfill their financial need, my Lord. And give each person according to your will. Bless each person, my Lord. And remove, Lord, envy from the enemy against them. And bless, Lord, this country. Bless this island. Give them blessings, spiritual ones. Give them blessings and joy in their hearts. Prosper them and allow for many people to know this path, that many may come and congregate to praise your name and to receive your blessings. Bless, Lord, the brothers and sisters here in this place. To all who congregate, give them showers of blessings and that they may press on and trust in you and that you soon, Lord, may give the spiritual gifts in perfection and growth in this place. I also ask, my Lord, that you may extend your mighty hand and bless all of the people who are watching us in this video to all of those who are watching us in this Bible study, that you may extend your mighty hand and listen to their prayers, look at their sorrows and the illnesses, look at those illnesses that are incurable, my Lord. There are many illnesses that people are suffering through, and there is no medicine for them, and they suffer the pain of that illness. Extend your hand, Lord, because there are many people who cry out to you and ask you for healing of many different illnesses, physical and mental. Lord, extend your hand and be merciful. Work miracles and signs in every one of them who cry out to you, who seek you and ask you, Lord. You know every one of them. You know the suffering and pain. Have mercy, Lord. Just as the psalm says, the psalm, there's a promise there that says, Call to me and I will answer you. And when I answer you, you will honor me. That is what your promise says. And that is how we want to call upon you. Answer us, O Lord. To honor you, to praise you, to glorify you, Lord. To give you thanks. Remove, my Lord, all of those spiritual bonds, chains, and ties all witchcraft, sorcery, and curses that many are tied down by this witchcraft and sorcery. Lord, rebuke and remove all of these diabolical ties in many people, in all of those, Lord, who the devil has wanted to come to, to submit them, to enslave them. Break these chains, Lord. Deliver those in bondage and cleanse Cleanse the heart of each person. Cleanse the mindset of each person, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, we all ask you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. The honor and the glory be for our God. The praises are for the King. The praises are for the Lord of glory. For the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Thank you, Lord. Chorus 110. Jehová, tú eres mi Dios. Alabaré y ensalzaré tu nombre. Jehová, tú eres mi Dios. Alabaré y ensalzaré tu nombre. Jehová, tú eres mi Dios. Alabaré y ensalzaré. Alabaré y ensalzaré tu nombre. 
Jehová, tú eres mi Dios, alabaré y ensalzaré tu nombre. Jehová, tú eres mi Dios, alabaré y ensalzaré tu nombre. Jehová, tú eres mi Dios, alabaré y ensalzaré. Glory to our God. We give thanks to the Lord. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Thank you. May God bless you. See you soon. And the Lord, I know that the Lord has given many blessings to all of you. Open your hearts, brothers and sisters. Prepare your hearts because truly, there is a lot of hardened hearts in many. And there are many who have their hearts very closed. They are apathetic. You should look in the dictionary to see what apathetic means. But the Lord says that there are many who are apathetic. And that is why the Lord has not manifested himself in the lives of each person. Each one of you pray to God and you ask the Lord to give you, to manifest himself, but you don't receive for having your heart like this, closed, some of you. Therefore, the Lord wants for there to be eagerness, for there to be more enthusiasm, more joy in every one of you to seek the path of God, to please him, to call upon him and so that you may be praying and present yourselves in God's presence, that you may be with that willingness in your heart. And in this way, the Lord will be manifesting himself in every one of you. Amen. But each one of you need to make an effort. Each person should make an effort because there is a lot of laziness and a lot of discouragement. And that the world and its attractions, physical and material things in life, they drag, they want to drag you into these things and you stay there in a spiritual stagnation. So the Lord wants to bless. The Lord wants to give gifts because there are many who ask for the gifts and ask the Lord, but he doesn't give it because their hearts, your hearts need to be more prepared for the Lord and make an effort. And you will see how God is going to be answering each one of your petitions and needs that some have needs that are urgent in terms of money. And God is going to be giving you that money. He is going to be giving that money. But the Lord says that it's not the material things in life that is important. But what's important is the spiritual things. Seek the gifts in perfection because God will be now manifesting himself in you and he's going to give you spiritual experiences. He, he is going to be giving you some gifts to others. He will be giving dreams, prophecies, and the Lord is going to manifest himself and he will give perfect gifts to many. The church is going to be growing. The church is going to be growing. This hall very soon will be too small. Very soon, this hall is going to be too small. We will need to open a new place in a different area because many people will come. Amen. The Lord is going to bring many people. Thanks be to God. May my God bless you. Receive blessings from heaven. Receive blessings. Thank you. See you soon. May God bless you.